So this video I talked about LASIK, my upcoming eyeshadow no buy, and what would have to happen for cancel culture to die. <laughs> Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. So today we are filming a kind of casual get ready with me. Today is Christmas Eve that I'm filming this. And so I have my products in this box right here. Just cause this is a get ready with me, not a tutorial. I'm not gonna focus too much on exactly what I'm doing. Um, but today I mostly wanted to use this Wet n Wild Cosmic Collision palette again because I mentioned it in my if I could only keep 10 palettes and it made me realize that I'm really not using this uh, as much as I should because it's a wonderful palette and I also pulled out some red lip options and so yeah let's get into it for primer I'm gonna go in with my Smashbox primerizer so I'm wearing contacts today for filming this because I'm blind without them and it is actually my last day of wearing contacts ever <laughs> that's because I have LASIK scheduled for this Friday afternoon and I'm so excited I'm um, using the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear Foundation my shade is 425 and I've been wanting to get lace for three years probably and it's one of those things like you know like an email if you put off writing an email for two months or something like that and then you finally do it and it takes four minutes something like that for LASIK I just called and made an appointment because I was just like you know like why do I keep on waiting on this should probably get it done I've heard from some of y'all since I posted on my Instagram story that you're also interested in getting LASIK or you're thinking about it so I'll probably record the process and check in after the procedure is done and let you guys know what I think about it Every resident and surgeon that I've talked to that have gotten LASIK have said that it's like the best thing they've ever done, especially if you're working like 28 hour shifts and you just don't need to worry about bringing your contacts, your contact solution, your glasses, if your eyes are going to get dry like in the middle of a procedure. And I suppose there is one thing that kind of spurred me to get LASIK now and that is because I like wearing contacts. And I just think that glasses are uncomfortable after a while because they make my ears feel heavy and they're hard to work out in and whatnot and hard to wear makeup in and such. But in the last six months or last year, my contacts have not been fitting my eye right because I have astigmatism. So with astigmatism, your contacts essentially have two prescriptions in them. They need to be oriented correctly for your vision to be clear. And so I thought maybe it's the optometrist I went to this year. And so I tried a new optometrist a few months ago but my contacts are doing the same thing where they weren't being oriented correctly and my vision was blurry and they were getting dry. So I figured that it just wasn't time to wait anymore and I finally scheduled my LASIK consultation. So for my bronzer, I just used the Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer in the shade Baked. I'm not going for a super sculpted look. I never go for a super sculpted look, but just kind of like fresh and pretty. Oh, I forgot to put on concealer. So I'm using the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealer. My shade is in Neutralizer, which is the very yellow one since I have very yellow skin. <laughs> and I didn't put on that much at all, just patting it out. I'm blessed to not have a lot of under eye wrinkles or darkness or discoloration. So this is mostly just to kind of even it out where my foundation couldn't get that easily. Oh, also, the people at the LASIK office told me that the recovery time for LASIK is three hours, which is way less than I thought it was. They said just go home, take a nap, wake up, and you're good to go. And they advise you to take a nap because a few hours after the procedure, your eyes are just going to be watering like profusely. And so it's a little bit uncomfortable. For blush, I'm taking this little sample of the Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur in the shade Mauve Sunrise. And another side effect of LASIK that is a little bit concerning for most people is dry eye. My dad got LASIK done 20 years ago and he always has to carry like a bunch of eye drops with him at all times. My mom was a little worried about that for me because I do have a little bit of like just dry eye myself as a pre-op condition. But at the consultation they said it was very very mild and it shouldn't be a problem especially because I am using waveform LASIK I believe. So it's a new kind of LASIK machine that is completely by laser and by that I mean they don't use a blade to shave the top layer of the cornea to make the flap and even that is by laser. The procedure itself is going to be less than a minute they said and so with this new kind of technology there are only seven centers in houston who have it your cornea is only going to be exposed for much less of time as with previous technology and so the risk or the severity of the post-op dry eye is supposed to be way less so that's good technology is great for highlight i'm taking the charlotte tilbury hollywood flawless filter in the shade two I love this product. It's super bougie. I bought it like from a reseller online for about half price. 
because this normally is over $50 and I cannot, I just cannot. <laughs> that aside, I hate to admit that this is really, really like a pretty sheen. Another thing I want to talk to you guys about, so on my channel, I do talk a lot about trying to be a smart consumer and being more mindful with how you spend and all that kind of stuff, but I'm ashamed to admit that this morning I placed a Sephora order. <laughs> So the Natasha Denona Mini Glam palette came out, and this is one of her mini five pan palettes. And this one is a cool tone palette, and as soon as I saw it, I very impulsively went online and added it to my cart, and then I spent like an hour on the Sephora website kind of hemming and hawing about whether I should get it or whether I shouldn't, and I ended up getting it. So it's a $25 palette, and I actually paid full price for it, which y'all know I hardly ever do, but I figured that I will get a lot of use out of it because it's a neutral palette and I really do like small compact palettes. It takes away a lot of decisions so that way it takes longer to reach decision fatigue through the day. So I feel kind of very uh, neutral about that purchase. I am not very... I'm excited to get it but my heart feels kind of weird that I just spent $25 on it. And the thing is, I do not need more neutral cool shades. I have the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soul True palette. I have the Tartlet in Bloom palette. I don't know, like I just kind of convinced myself because I'm like, wow, it's smaller and compact and so it's different, but it's really not. <laughs> this is the Benefit Goof Proof Brow Pencil and my shade is in four. It's like this kind of impulse purchasing, not really, I did think about the purchase, but this kind of unnecessary spending, I suppose, on things that I really don't need and I already have in my collection that is spurring me to do a no buy slash low buy for 2020. And I'll make a video more explaining that later, but I'm essentially, at least for palettes, completely cutting out palettes for at least the first six months of 2020. So I just used the Anastasia Beverly Hill Clear Brow Gel and I just tried this out recently because I got it in my December Allure box and this is like no joke, it's actually, like I would repurchase that again and again, it's a really really good brow gel. And so I just put some on my brows and then I take another spoolie and brush up my hair just so I don't get like way too much brow product on my brows from the brush of the gel itself. And yeah, this is like something that is making my brows look super fluffy. You could do the same thing with soap brows too, <laughs> but I just have this product so I'm using it and I really like it. A break to rest my knees because I'm sitting on my legs like Japanese style, <laughs> old Asian style where you have to fold them under your butt. So this is my base done. So at this point if you were to do like a really really minimal look, you could just throw on mascara and you're good to go because I mean the brows frame the face and I feel like if you have your brows done you look like a natural beauty. Okay, so all I have left to do are my eyes and my lips. And like I said before, for my eyes, I'm gonna be going in with the Wet n Wild Cosmic Collision Palette. I forgot to bring eye primer, so I'm gonna put some of my concealer on my eyes. First, I'm gonna go in with this transition shade. I had another thing that I kind of was on my mind recently, just with cancel culture and whatnot, so at least it's kind of how I was thinking about it. I don't know if it's how y'all think about it too, but I generally thought of cancel culture as like a beauty YouTube thing, just cause this part of the internet is kind of a mess for the really famous people. But actually, it's not just a beauty YouTube thing and it's problematic everywhere. So recently I just saw that there's like some drama in the mukbang community and it was with Stephanie Su and Nikado Avocado and Hyoni B. And so Stephanie Su made this 45 minute video kind of explaining what happened and why she felt so scared and intimidated by Nikado Avocado. It, I don't want to go into all the details, but essentially she brought up receipts of the messages and the way that Nikado Avocado was acting and kind of explaining how she realized that he was manipulating her. And there was also some instigation of cyberbullying from other YouTubers. And I feel like a lot of just us normal people on YouTube talk about how we hate cancel culture and how we wish it would just go away in 2020, like leave it behind in the old decade and stuff. But I'm using um, this next transition shade. I I mean, I don't think it's going to go away. It's not. But because what we would have to do, what would have to happen for cancel culture to go away is for people to be kind and respectful to each other. And that's not something that's going to change because we went from 2019 to 2020, you know? And I know it's not the general population who behaves like this, but it is sad that that is how we're represented because drama is louder than not drama. And so it kind of got me thinking about 
like my own life and how I think I should be living. And I guess how a lot of us should be living. I'm, I can't tell anyone how to live, but like a lot of this canceling and drama stuff is one person attacking another person and then that person defending themselves by saying, hey, like, I know this is what this person told you, but this is what actually happened. And they pull up actual conversations. And my like ideal vision of life is just if we could live life in a way that we won't be ashamed if anything comes out about us. So kind of like the whole, what is it? Your true character is what you do when nobody is watching thing. I'm using this matte green shade. Concentrating now so I don't mess this up while I'm talking. I could either go in with this green, but I did do that when I was filming my if I could only keep 10 palettes video look. And so I really wanna go in actually with either this bronze or this gold. Actually, I'm gonna go in with this gold and show you guys what it really looks like because it's super good. There you go. So that's that shade, super pretty. So as I was saying about behaving in a way that you wouldn't be ashamed of if everything came out, that's because when there's drama, it's because people bring out how you really were to them. And then you're shocked when you have consequences from it. Another way to think about it or word it is to be prepared for consequences. So like a lot of times we'll do just little things like skip a required lecture because no one checks attendance anyways or maybe trash talk someone in your friend group or at your work and say with the lecture thing sure it's maybe they don't check attendance but if they did and you got caught not going to a required lecture then that's like a huge mark against professionalism which is a huge deal you can have a lot of consequence from that in school and even with work too if you just kind of didn't do very small jobs that you thought no one would really care about anyway but then if someone asks you about it and you said oh i didn't do that like two months ago then you look like a fool and you look careless and lazy and inconsiderate and then that just kind of follows you for the next length of your career. Yeah, what do y'all think? Even if a consequence is very unlikely to you, if they happen, you can't say anything to like defend yourself from that. <laughs> because you didn't do your job or you really did say that thing about that person or you really did treat maybe like a lower ranking employee than you this way and things come out. People are not gonna change. And the thing is, a lot of times like what this drama is revolving around, they may not actually be bad people, it's just they had a bad moment. But then that moment kind of overshadows everything else they've done in their career or with their friends or just as a person. If they have done good things, it's completely overwritten by whatever came out. Okay, I've been rambling about this enough. It's just what I've been thinking about in the last couple of days after seeing the Stephanie Sue and Nikita Avocado thing going on. For my inner corner highlight, I'm going to take this what looks to be a white shade, but it has a very strong gold reflex. Now for final lip pairing, I have a few different red toned options. I have L'Oreal, this Rouge Signature Lip in I Am Worth It, which is the brightest red among the three that I chose. So that's a really true red. I have Maybelline Spice For Me, which is from the line where they made the shades that are supposed to suit every skin tone. And I actually really like this lipstick. I wear it a lot. And I usually share it out on my lips, so it's almost a nude, but it gives me a little bit more color. So they're spice for me. And then I have the Bite Beauty lipstick in Tannin. This is from their Christmas set last year, and this is more of a deep red. So there is Tannin. So I think I'm going to go with Tannin for this look. Oh, you know what? I actually have a lip liner. I know, crazy. I hardly ever use lip liner. This is the Kylie lip liner. Look at how small it is. This is in oh Mary Jo K. Just to make sure that I don't go too crazy with this Tannin shade. Dang it, I accidentally overlined my lower lip. Eh, might as well fill in the rest. Okay, so here's that lip liner. I kind of filled in my whole lip. <laughs> I could probably just throw on a lip gloss or something and go from here, but I am going to use Tannin because I said I would. Plus, I hardly have an occasion to wear this shade. It's cool that Bite Beauty is reformulating all of their formulas to be completely vegan now. That's something that's happening. In case you were wondering why all their products were on such severe discount in Sephora, there we have it. Oh, also, lol, after I finished the video, I realized I never put on mascara, so let's do that. I'm using the Monster Big Mascara. Here I am with the final look, including mascara, and I did film this little clip after I finished filming the rest of the video, so the remainder of the video, I'm going to have no mascara. I'm just going to have bare eyelashes, but I just wanted to pop in real quick and actually finish the look. And I talked about a lot of random stuff in this video. So this video, I talked about LASIK, my upcoming eyeshadow no buy, and other upcoming details of my no buy, and what would have to happen for cancel culture to die. <laughs> that was a lot. 
lastly, I wanted to wish y'all, of course, a merry, merry Christmas. And I know that Christmas is not merry for everybody. And if it's not for you, then I pray that you have the best Christmas you can. And for all of us, let's remember the reason for the season. And that is celebrating that a baby was born. And from that birth, we have so many promises that will be fulfilled that we can't even imagine. And we can have a personal relationship with the one who controls everything and that's really comforting. And we're allowed a personal relationship with someone who cares for us, no matter what, which sometimes we don't have in life. In Egypt, before the great exodus, which is when all the Israelites left Egypt to where they were being enslaved, the Israelites were told to paint the lamb's blood over their doorframe. And if they did that, then the angel of death would pass over their homes and not take their firstborn, which is what they did to the rest of the Egyptian population, as well as the Pharaoh's son to convince him to release and free the Israelites. And so with that painting of the frame of the lamb's blood, which is symbolic for Jesus's blood that he spilled for us, the angel of death didn't barge into the homes that had the blood and make sure that they were worthy and okay to not have this punishment. No, the blood on the doorframe was enough to protect and vouch for the people who lived inside. So obviously the main Christmas story is like the birth of Jesus and the three wise men go and an angel shows up and all that, all that stuff. I think that this story in particular, the one um, that I just talked about with the lamb's blood is another good one to remember in this season because a lot of times we're jaded to the same old story year after year and we lose the appreciation for it. So hearing it in a new way hones my heart in again in the right direction. All right, well, have a merry, merry Christmas. And before you go about the rest of your holidays, I wanted to remind you and tell you that y'all are my treasure and y'all are so treasured. And remember to find beauty in every day and most importantly, be kind to yourself. I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Let's go ahead and have some fun.